Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Echoes and I'm a VTuber. So something I've been wanting to talk about for a while as I've had these slides prepared for <laughs> quite some time but I haven't gotten around to recording it yet was um, I want to uh, take the time to go over my uh, Echoes verse characters which are pretty much a group of characters designed alongside my main VTuber character as a way of being part of their world even if they're on like different planets and worlds if that makes sense. It's kind of like a uh, multiverse, but instead of being different universes, they're, they're, it's mostly them being on different planets, if that makes sense, but within the same universe. So yeah, so like in a way, if they wanted to, they could all meet each other and not have to deal with um, any like supernatural, unusual supernatural methods, if you get what I mean. So yeah, so um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to talking about this with, uh, with uh, everyone. <laughs> Um, all all uh, artist credits will be on the future slides. It's mostly just to prevent the title slide from getting a little bit too cluttered. So yeah. So first I'm going to uh, talk about the overarching concepts for this Echoes verse. So uh, since I originally wanted to become a VTuber, I have always wanted to create more characters outside of just my VTuber one because I didn't want my VTuber character to just be alone. As a trend I notice is that a lot of when a lot of uh, VTubers are made, excluding like the group ones, like mostly indies, right? Usually they're just by themselves, unless if they're like collabing with friends and stuff. So I wanted rather than just focus on more just like collaborating with friends, right? It's more like because my VTuber character is their own unique character with their own from their own world and their own goals, it makes sense for there to be other characters also related to that world. Um, I also have had, uh, after my main VTuber character, I, I had the idea of making Hashimoto Chisa and Ashura Madurum. Uh Those are my uh, next two um, characters for some time. I kind of like was brainstorming them because um, before you can like commission for any like VTuber stuff or any uh, like art related things, you have to have a design prepared for the most. It makes it a lot easier for artists especially if you want to commission them for art to have a design rate prepared. Um, so because I had to uh, take some time to invest in uh, getting the designs created ahead of time, as um, when I f was first getting into VTubing, uh, I one time I was, uh, was trying to commission artists I liked, but they told me that they couldn't draw a character who didn't have a design prepared. So I had to be passed over. I was like, and I was like, oh, dang. I really need to get a character prepared ahead of time. So um, luckily I was able to get my initial VTuber design uh, for a relatively low cost. But I, uh, but also for some of the designs I commissioned here, um, they're a bit more expensive, which uh, <laughs> it also comes with mostly working with very uh, talented people who were able to uh, realize the vision I had in mind. And also some that are a little bit cheaper. So it just depends on what, goals you had in mind so um <laughs> so more of the multiverse came in mind was that when uh, a recent gym opened near me um in september i was like hey i could maybe just make a a, a multiverse of different characters so that my vtuber character isn't just by themselves as um when i was at the gym i was listening to the honkai impact third dreamy euphonia co uh euphony concert and when the flame chasers were introduced it was just such a memorable experience for me as I've never really got into, into Honkai. Like I've tried, but it just wasn't for me. But in the, in the concert itself, when the flame tears were introduced, it was like, it was like so many characters who are all related to each other. They have relationships with each other, but, but they're like, it just left such a memorable impact to me. I was like, oh, I want to do something kind of like this too. If you get what I mean. <laughs> Um, and also, uh, this uh, multiverse was also inspired by the Clampverse. Uh, if you know Clamp series. So Clamp is a popular group of female mangaka who are known for creating a lot of very famous series like Kobato, Cardcaptor Sakura, Subasa Chronicle, XXXholic, Chobits, among other series. Very famous. And a, a, a common um, trope that they're in characters they're known for is that they have their own multiverse with their characters, right? So sometimes 
you'll have older characters appear in newer works, whether it's through them going into different worlds or maybe cameo appearances. Uh, like this uh, universe has their own set of roles, which I'm not going to go into, but it is uh, it definitely inspired me as well, along with the uh, flame tatious. It was something like I was kind of like nursing in my head, but I didn't really get into more deeply. Um, personally, my most favorite uh, clamp series is Suvasa Reservoir Chronicle, and I also like Exocatholic as well. Those are my two favorites. Um, they both uh, mean quite a lot to me overall, especially Subasa, because it sort of inspired what what I consider like ideal romance and uh, romantic relationships can be like. So yeah. <laughs> So, um, in order to go into the general concepts between, between, between uh, the Echoes of characters, is that the main phrase is, you are never alone. Because it, it did come from me wanting my VTuber character not be alone in their world. So because of that, it's a group of five different characters with different backgrounds from different planets and worlds. All, all in the same universe, but from different, completely different places. Um, I created them myself, though they are very inspired by things I like or things I care about. So in a way, you could say that these characters are sort of my uh, children in a way. Uh, just how artists really care about their OCs. It's, I feel the same way with these characters because they are in a way representations of things I like. <laughs> um, every, and everyone is a normal person but finds himself in special circumstances. So. Also, uh, a problem I have a lot of YouTuber characters is that many of them tend to be focused around mythical beings, like gods, angels, demons. But uh, I've or like tend to have a lot of overused tropes like animalistic characteristics for the sake of animalistic characteristics, and I was kind of feeling a little disappointed by that. I wanted some. I wanted to see more characters who had a compelling background appearance and why they existed for why they existed not just for the sake of existing but being able to stand on their own right in their own worlds uh, in their own roles so in a way they're all normal people i guess they're not super supernatural beings they're like from for the most part they're uh human um as in like acting like a person i guess but they they, they try their best to live life to the fullest. And also, an uh, important part is form is followed by function. So when I create uh, characters, I think about their role in the world, what they do, what they aspire to become. It, it's more not just focusing on just the sake of appearance, but more like why, what, what is their goals? What do they want to achieve? And then naturally from that, you get the characteristics of what they look like. Because when you look at a character, you should generally get a good sense of wh what type of character they are. And this is just from first impressions. If you're not able to get that, that means that there's something lacking. Um, and they all share uh, specific traits as well. So they all have two-tone hair, as in that they have their bangs being a lighter color, and they have darker color in the back. There's a very specific reason for this as it's mostly inspired my love of Hikaru no Go, and Hikaru the protagonist has blonde hair in the front and the bangs, and the back hair is dark brown. It's a sort of a combination that always stood out to me, and it's not often used, so I wanted it as a way of uniting all of my characters in appearance so you could kind of recognize them. Um, they also uh, wear uh, earrings or jewelry, as I personally really like earrings. <laughs> Um, they each have their own role and purpose, as I mentioned before. And they also have a dynamic or relationship with others in the group. It's not just them existing separately, but when they find themselves together, they find themselves interacting with each other, uh, depending on who they are and uh, what they care about. Um, this is a especially important uh, trait because, for example, if you compare like Fgo and Genshin, for example, Genshin Impact is known for having a lot of characters being related to each other. And that creates more complex dynamics. And it's always really interesting 
and important to people to understand why do people exist uh, why do these characters exist and how do they work with other people in their world that's incredible they're able to exist in the same world while for F Go, you have a lot of uh, characters who are historical figures, and some of them don't really mesh well. They like, you know, they kind of exist for the sake of existing, but but sometimes you wonder like, why does this character exist here? I know that often enough they're integrated into a plot to a degree, but it's also very much possible that they could be easily excluded. So there's that difference in do they belong in this work? If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll just quickly go over my uh, my original uh, VTuber character. Um, their current name is Echoes, but originally they were known as Hoshi no Shimizu, as Hoshi is her star and Shimizu was related to water. So it's kind of a, a homage to them being related to space in Mega Pilots and also related to my original uh, username of... Uh, Water Dark, which I'm uh, known for, uh, known as online as well. The original character design is Popsineko, as when I was looking for an artist to uh, work for a VTuber design, I was able to work with uh, Popsineko because they were willing to uh, work with my uh, descriptions and uh, references, as at the time I didn't have a design. So I'm really, really grateful for Popsineko uh, starting off my VTuber journey with their design and after that I was able to commission like more art and then get even better references. So in a way it all started from here. So and this is uh, Pope Sineko's uh, design. Uh, you could see that they have, why I uh, commissioned them was because they had very detailed line art which I liked especially with their Genshin fan art. So uh, and they have a really beautiful rendering style. So yeah, went with it. Um, I was later told that the proportions aren't right, which I, I can definitely see that, but I had to start somewhere, right? Um, regardless, Pulp Sineko is definitely a very good artist with their own uh, style, which uh, definitely stands out. <laughs> so, uh, for the original uh, concept behind, behind, behind Echoes, which is my uh, main VTuber, is that if I could look like anything, what would I want to look like? So, I pretty much thought of what would I look like if I, uh, what is my like ideal appearance? So, what I thought of at first was that, hey, I wanted to be a mecha pilot because I think mecha pilots are great and they're super cool and like, why not? And I wanted it to, in order to look a bit more unique rather than just go for like modern sci-fi aesthetics, I instead went for the space opera route as at the time I was watching Crest of the Stars which is a, um, a very uh, older space opera from, I believe, the 80s or 90s, involving um, pretty much a, uh, what's it called? A group of like aliens known as the Ob, which have created their own empire and take over like plants and things. So a bit more into that in uh, the uh, detail and who is Echoes <laughs> on that. But um, it definitely, uh, I took a lot of um, homage from that into this original design and also i like military uniforms i like capes i like long hair i like androgynous appearance i also like fit and tone physiques and if possible for my care to be good looking so uh, so i kind of combine all of what i like into one character <laughs> so yeah so if i if i could look like anything i look like how i look like right now <laughs> um and uh, yeah, also here is where you see the art by Bao Shankaro. Um, this person is known for creating the... Uh, they did a lot of the drawings for the Grandmaster Demonic Cultivation uh, light novels. Not, no, like, what do you call it? Published novels. But they're mostly known for the Russian version. But they also did for the English version too. So uh, I was just had a very, very lucky timing for being able to commission them as... They open very spontaneously and close very spontaneously. So it's just, the artist did a really good job. And originally the design didn't have the tiara as that was added later. Once I was able to refine the design a little bit further. And here are some of the, uh, the general visual lore inspirations. So the first image is of Crest of the Stars, which I mentioned earlier uh, about this um, kid. I forgot his name. And then he meets this... Uh, like this ob royalty known as a Lafiel, and they kind of go on adventures together. 
uh, and along with like going to different planets and dealing with space warfare kind of thing. It's not a mecha show, as it's mostly dealing with spaceships fighting spaceships. But I really like the concept of having like, what's the word? Having like genetics that are better suited to surviving and living in space. That's uh, something I took for my own VTuber concept. As I wanted, I just thought it was just really cool. But also I thought of it as like sort of, uh, what do you call it? A believable evolution of humanity. As space is the final frontier. And most likely in the future, once the Earth has like, you know, ran out of its like natural resources, then people would have to look elsewhere. So I think of it as like, like even if it's a sci-fi scenario, I think of humanity going that way uh, naturally, even if it may take centuries or uh, or like millennia. Um, the middle image is of Gundam Unicorn. It is my favorite Gundam series uh, of all time. I really, really love it for a lot of reasons. It's it's a uh, has a lot of ideals that I personally uh, believe in myself. And also, uh, I from it I mostly took the new type concept. Which, if you know Gundam, it's pretty much uh, people be uh, because of the fact that they have to go into space. Ha about how like future generations of humanity have gained certain like psychic characteristics to better adapt and emphasize with other, empathize with other human beings. So it's uh, s something called a new type resonance, where new types can sort of connect with each other, and they could also feel the emotions of other new types and also of other people overall. In a way, they're more sensitive to uh, people's feelings and thoughts, while also having psychic abilities. So yeah, I, I always thought that was interesting. And then the last one is Gargantia, which is uh, pretty much a show about this kid who, who is sort of fighting against aliens, and then due to various circumstances, winds up on Earth. And, but this Earth has pretty much went through a second ice age, so it's covered in water. And he has to find a way to adapt to this, uh, the like the old uh, Earth civilization, as it's after humanity. It's like pretty much after humanity left during the Ice Age, but people who were remaining on Earth had to find their own way to survive. And they survive on ships, and also just trying to get by idly with their lives, not dealing with the problems of other friends of humanity, like the kid with the uh, white hair. Uh, who spent his entire life battling against aliens so yeah so it's in a way my vtuber lore is inspired by these three series um you could probably uh, look at it more in the uh, the respective video <laughs> i'm not gonna go to it again but um it really shows that sometimes uh when you want to look for inspirations for characters it doesn't really hurt to kind of fuse things that you like together and it sort of becomes its own unique thing <laughs> Then here's some secondary ones, as they weren't, um, excuse me, um, they weren't main focuses when I was trying to create my character, but may have indirectly been influenced as I really like these series as well. So the first one is Fafnir uh, Exodus, which is pretty much a older mecha show involving a group of young kids who have to fight against aliens in order to defend their Earth. So... <laughs> so in a way, that is uh, where I took my idea of the Earth Earth, uh, Earth Protection Force, about my character being a mecha pilot tasked with protecting Earth from alien invaders. Uh, while uh, the middle is Captain Earth, which also takes a bit of that as well, fighting against alien invaders using mechs. And the last one is Shinseki Yori, which I mostly reference mostly for the psychic abilities in living in sort of a, not really a dystopian society, but more... A society that has advanced with um, more psychic abilities. So yeah, so just some things that may have indirectly influenced uh, my VTuber character's design, but um, they're not like direct, direct. I just happen to like them and they just may have like uh, unexpectedly kind of cropped into the influence of it. <laughs> so um, what, uh, what Echo's role is, is that they're the leader. So in a way, they sort of bind everyone else together. Um, they're a mecha pilot and spaceship captain. They can travel between planets using a spaceship. They also have a mecha design, which I, I didn't have enough room on this slide to include. 
but it, it's very cool it's it's uh, uh the mech design is inspired by the albion mecha from captain earth uh, but it's a little bit different in color scheme and general look. But yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And they also have a mascot version, which I was able to show here. As the artist did a super, super uh, amazing job and had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the mascot version is inspired by the Genshin Aranara, which are kind of like these uh, spirits of the forest. But I, I, I liked it because it kind of had like a unique like helmet look. And also, it will integrate some of the funnels in like a jetpack. Like the point is that it's meant to be a cute version because uh, you know how uh, large mecha suits can be. So when not using the mecha suit, it'd be good to have like a little portable version to uh, move around a bit. Um, the fact that it's like small and portable like that uh, is all is inspired by uh, the third, the girl with the blue eye, where um, the main character Hanaka has this assistant AI. Uh, they call friend companion known as bogey who also in their like little version outside of you know controlling a tank they uh, have like this little bucket version so <laughs> so yeah in a way it's kind of inspired by that in size at least so uh echoes is androgynous um originally uh i had in mind was that they could kind of freely change genders kind of like ranma half but if you think about it practically it, it, it makes no sense at all because, like, imagine that a person has to change genders, like, kind of, like, spontaneously. It sounds, like, kind of really painful, like, having, like, that occurring. So I decided to exclude that part and just keep the androgynous part instead. And they're also a psychic, like, a Gundam new type. So, yeah, so these are just uh, some of their uh, main characteristics. Uh, I also included that top left uh, image by... Um, Mamon Sinon, as uh, it's pretty much the art that I like the most overall, as it's, I feel like it shows the concept of my VTuber character the best. Them being a mecha pilot, also them being a spaceship captain, and also leading a group of people who control, who they work with in order to control their spaceship. So yeah. And now I'll go into uh, Hashimoto Chisa, who is the wandering mortal and merchant. They were designed by King Kingu, who is very a very very skilled character designer, and I also was very fortunate to work with uh, at the time as they uh, had their commissions open. I was like, "Let's go, <laughs> let's try," and uh, I was very uh, lucky in that way. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are like the general uh, original concepts. So uh, what's the word? It's like she was originally. It's uh, like one character combined with another character who I'll introduce shortly next. But I separated them based on where they live. So she's the one who ended up being living from a cold and wintry place. While Ashar ended up being from a hot desert place. So I split them up based on the type of uh, environments that they lived in. So her hair is black and white as um, pretty much she used to be an immortal. So her original hair color is the black, but because she's so old, her hair slowly started turning white. And also include that uh, different two-tone hair as well. So um, her eyes were originally blue, but also with the becoming immortal, they became a golden color. It's sort of like meant to look more unnatural. So I, also include a few concepts that I had in mind with the type of clothing I liked, as I wanted it to be like a traditional Asian type of clothing. Her her clothing is a bit on the thicker end, as it is better to wear thicker clothing clothing in a cold place. Like the Japanese Ainu people uh, from the Utawaru Mono series, or like um, a bride story or Tenji no Kuni. Shokoku no Altair takes place in ancient Mongolia, so that's more influence in Ashar's design. But yeah, th that's uh, generally what I had in mind. Uh, she also wears a lot of jewelry like the Mao or Homong Chinese people. Uh, like It's like a lot of silver colored jewelry. This inspiration took uh, was mostly from Hua Cheng from Heaven's Official Blessing. As I wanted her to wear a lot of jewelry, but for it to be purposeful. 
as I wanted to kind of like her jewelry when she wears it has like a very loud sound to it. It's like what's the word? It's like you could hear her coming. So that's why I wanted it to be very prominent, but also have a nice ringing sound. Her weapons are primarily a metal fan, but also at the time I was thinking, oh, we can maybe include needles or strings. She is um, predominantly Asian style weapons. Uh, and her Johnny Basque story is that she is a mortal business person who sells herbs and books for a living. Uh, she drank from a spring in the ground and became immortal. But due to not being able to die, she tries to figure out how to, and then she meets the guardian of the planet. So in a way, she has had a, a lot of things happen to her over time, but she tries her best even with unusual circumstances. Also, just back on the design real quick. Uh, what I really liked about how King designed with her was he definitely used the Utawaru mono, uh, motif as Utawaru mo, Uta Wararu Mono uses a lot of Ainu inspired clothing. So he used that. And then I, I included the hat, which is, I forgot what the hat's called, but it's like a, it's like a specific hat used for winter. And she also has a few books and, and um, medical vial and like plant vials because of the fact that she's a merchant and also has the medicine case as well. Medicine uh, merchant case for holding the wares. So overall, I really like how he designed her, especially with all the patterns. And it's sort of a design that you don't usually see with VTuber characters. But I <laughs> I enjoyed um, working with uh, this design and commissioning art for it. It's very fun. <laughs> also on the right, you see that there's a bit of like a leather underneath. So that is also a very nice uh, touch too. So... What her main uh, inspirations are is actually a lot from Mushishi, as Mushishi is a very, very good anime series that is very memorable to me. So because of that, I wanted to create a character like that, as uh, she's inspired by Mushishi, but also she's inspired a lot by this middle image, as when I was younger, I wrote a story about a traveling immortal who uh, was um, wandering the world, who pretty much drank from a spring in the ground and then suddenly became an immortal and had to deal with the consequences. So uh, as uh, when I was younger, I used to write uh, stories based off images for challenges. Don't know whether it was for a challenge or not. It may have just been like a whim of me just writing something as uh, I don't remember what I was inspired by, but regardless, I just really enjoyed it and it's, it's a idea that kind of stuck around my mind for a while because of that and in a way she encapsulates the immortal businesswoman type of lady and also uta wanamon as uh for the clothing motifs as you can see it's not like the typical japanese clothing it's a very specific style and then here you can see on the left is a lot of the uh the Mao or Homong style jewelry, which is a lot of silver, and it, it can be uh, very, very ornate. So <laughs> what she's wearing is currently a lot more simplified. But I can imagine that she could very easily wear a lot more if she wanted to. But practically wise, it makes no sense to wear too much excess. And instead, she keeps it uh, relatively minimalistic. So it's kind of striking balance between the two. On the right, you see the medicine seller from the series Mononoke, which... Uh, also is two degree inspiration um, uh, for her general appearance, but it's more indirect uh, as uh, is as she's mostly inspired by Mushishi. Oops, sorry, I went too far. So originally Chisa and Ashar, uh, who are the characters in the bottom left, uh, were originally split were originally split into two because Originally, uh, the concept I had in mind was just too detailed to put in one character, so it was way easier just to make it into two. She is the mentor and the peddler of the group. So in a way, because of, this is often because of her age, as she has the most experience with having had many lovers, children over the years, and respectively many relationships. But also because of that, she has become kind of tired of having a loved ones dying all the time especially from old age or disease or watching her children die in front of her. It's, I'm pretty sure it's just very heart-wrenching for her. 
so she tries not to get into relationships that much more easily anymore. But uh, Ashar uh, has a crush on her, and he's trying to make him, uh, her notice his feelings. And for the most part, because of her experiences, she mostly ignores him, but she is kind of warming up to him a little bit. It's kind of like a slow burn, in a way. And she also acts as a mentor figure toward uh, Echoes as well, as uh, in a way Echoes uh, is her student and she is the teacher, as she's sort of imparting her experience and wisdom to not only Echoes, but also other members of the group. So yeah, she in a way is uh, a bit uh, more on the complex side because of that immortal aspect of her. But yeah. <laughs> So the, in the top left image is kind of inspired by uh, Echoes visiting uh, Chisa's uh, home planet, which is covered in ice, and they're kind of chilling in a cave. So <laughs> that's where that concept came from. And then the bottom left with uh, Ashar and uh, Chisa, it's sort of like a, like kind of like a very, uh, it's like a couple doodle <laughs> about uh, Ashar being very suave, and she is like, uh, how 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 do I react to this? <laughs> Uh, next, I'll talk about uh, Ashar Madrum. He is the traveling mercenary and dancer who is uh, designed by Pinlin, as Pinlin is very, very good at working with very detailed designs, and because of that, I wanted to work with her for it. She is extremely good with um, embroidery and patterns, so also another reason. So, yeah, so pretty much because of him being the opposite of Chisa, he lives on Desert Planet, and respectively, he's very tan. He's also a dancer. Um, his main ability is that he could see the memories of a planet, in, of the planet, as his is covered in a desert, and he wants to kind of bring life back to it. He also has a third eye in the middle of his forehead. Uh, his main emphasis is on being very physically capable and also being, very, being able to move very well. He has a uh, light green hair because of the fact that he, his ability is related to um, being able to see memories of the planet and wanting to, in a lot of his, a lot of it being related to like plants and life. So it makes sense for him to have green hair. Um, and also include a few uh, traits that I had in mind. Um, him having like something to cover up his eye in the center of his forehead, wearing generally loose clothing, Having the earrings, as mentioned before, he's mostly inspired by uh, by uh, Mamut from Shokoku no Altair. He a lot of his uh, characters are also inspired by Hanukkah, like the third eye in her abilities, and also from Dea, as in having more of a, like a floating, like uh, floating airy like appearance with the clothing, and also her also being a mercenary too. So yes, yeah, so in a way, uh, Ashar is kind of like the opposite of um, of Chisa, but in a way they also complement each other because of that. So uh, here just kind of confirms that he's uh, inspired by kind of fusion between Honoka and Eeks from the third, The Girl with the Blue Eye, which is one of my favorite uh, anime series ever. What he takes from Honoka is that he takes the headband, he takes the center, uh, eye in the center forehead. He also takes uh, that uh, he's a jack of all trades slash mercenary, but also makes it uh, a very much of gold to not kill people. Well, from Eeks, who's the, the, uh, the blonde haired person on the top, on the left side, is uh, the ability to see the memories of the planet through the third eye. So in a way, he has a bit of supernatural abilities. Um, yeah, and then also uh, from Mahmoud, who is the blonde haired person on the bottom, middle, and the right, is the general clothing. I wanted to give him a lot of very airy, loose clothing to help with um, mobility, but also show that dancer motif. And also I wanted to use him as an example for a lot of incredibly decorative patterns, which uh, the Middle East is uh, often known for. So yeah, so... <laughs> so these are the mo the most of the main inspirations. 
well, here more secondary, where they kind of influence, but not always like a lot. So on the left is this very famous in like Indian wedding dance video. If you look it up in YouTube, you could find it. But it's pretty much about this group of skilled dancers who are dancing at like one of the member, one of the, like a very beloved friend's wedding, and they do such an amazing job that the video went viral. So. It's something that just kind of stuck out in my mind and it actually made me want like because Ashar used to be just a mercenary as uh, Honoka was a mercenary. But because of me watching this video, I was like, hey, he could also be a dancer. That kind of makes sense with what type of character he would be. So he became a dancer, too. <laughs> and also uh, inspired by Deya as in general flowing aesthetic and the uh, mercenary part. Um, Obviously, the personality isn't quite the same, but the general idea is still there, though. So what his role is that he is the jack of all trades. He is kind of the healer, kind of like along with Chisa, but in different ways. He is like the type who can kind of patch people up because he's very good at sewing. And also he's the dancer. He is the smoothest talker of the group and is also the most suave. And he's a relatively chill and relaxed guy because he kind of lives life in the moment. He doesn't really stress about what could happen too far in the future and kind of wants to just enjoy life. He has a crush on Chisa and trying to get to know her better. And because of how both Chisa and Ashar were conceptually created, they're kind of opposites but complementary. Uh, one of his... Uh, <laughs> One of his uh, key traits is that he is very good at embroidery, as he often makes his own clothing himself. And also he could patch people up with that, those various skills. And he also has an AI companion, which was found in an egg-shaped container, which kind of looks like a fairy, but can also control any electronic vehicle vessel. And also maintains his sand tank, which Ashar calls home. In a way, um, this fairy companion is the female version of Boogie from the third. Um, don't really have a name for her yet, um, but it's just it's mostly also wanting him to have a bit of a companion as he's often finding himself alone. You can see the top left is pretty much a, a fan art uh, in commission by Binger. That uh, I wanted to kind of show the type of person he is. So you see him looking at like a starry sky. It's very beautiful and really glad I was able to work with the artist. It really make, makes him look handsome, but also shows the type of person he is. Next, we have the delivery, delivery care mechanic, Audrey Byrne. So she was designed by Lou Ferris. As I was looking for someone who could do a bit more of a cuter design, kind of a lot more in line with like more mainstream VTuber characters or VTuber or just OCs overall. So yeah, so I, uh, so Anna was turning out quite nicely. <laughs> so her concept is mostly stemming from the idea of a sci-fi magical girl. She's not actually a magical girl, by the way, she can't use magic, but in a way she is skilled in other things, which kind of show off her magical girlness in a way. So she is a young woman who can deliver packages. And one of the, her key characters is that she has this transforming metal pole that can uh, sort of morph into different shapes. Like it could become a flying sword, it could become roller skates, it could become a broomstick. So in a way she can use it to get around. And also she can is a mechanic that can control and use any type of vehicle. Like cars, boats, motorcycle planes. It's just pretty much all related to her job. Like, if she is good with traveling and she can use any vehicle, she can also get anywhere. And that makes her being the delivered packages all the more important. Her hair color is like this pink, pinkish red, and green eyes as complementary. Uh, she generally prefers practical outfits. Like, she has her tool belt, she has a backpack or she has a shoulder bag to carry her belongings and her clothing is for the most part just warm and comfortable and because of her uh, intuition of fixing mechanical things she also uh, finds enjoys just fixing stuff overall 
like it's kind of like uh how like amuro ray from gundam is also a mechanic for his own gundam uh, mech at times because of his own like intuition toward it and i wanted her to kind of reflect that too one of her vehicles is a glider but she really has the opportunity to use it and she can make a makeshift one and she also likes to fly and soar through the air so she sort of represents um what's the word like a love of traveling a love of flying and also being able to do things using sci-fi technology so like she kind of represents a lot of things her inspirations are uh, a lot of things but it's it often comes from mostly from a mix of nausicaa and crotch capture sakura where from nausicaa she takes uh that she's like a a young woman who enjoys flying and soaring through the air. From Cardcatter, she takes this like cute, cute like young girl kind of vibe. And from Tagami Bachi, which is this century, it's more about the focus on delivering packages and delivering the intentions and wishes of those who who are who wish to impart their desires to other people, whether it's like heartfelt or not. It's uh, important to deliver these messages as um, in a way, like, like if you think about it, when you receive like a text, right, it's not as meaningful compared to like a letter, for example, or a gift in a way. It's like kind of it's like kind of the difference of importance and like sentiment. So I want to convey that through her. And this is some more indirect in, uh, inspiration where she is also inspired by Violet from Violet Evergarden. Uh, more about, how, like, what do you call it? Mm, more about, like, delivering letters and intentions through words. Not just through, like, technology alone. She, uh, the metal pole is inspired by Sun Wukong, uh, the Chinese mythology about having a transforming metal pole. Not quite the same as... Sun Wukong is more just like this weapon that you just use to whack people and it can become like big or small but hers is more that it could like change shape completely so it's not quite the same I think but still something that I thought would be kind of interesting and Kiki's delivery service for um I think pretty obvious reasons about her delivering packages so her role is that she um or sorry her initial concept was that she used to be a Chan Chan Young boy man who caught fish and used a glide to deliver mail between ships and people and came from the same planet as echoes and at the uh, initially in that concept it was pretty much just a gender bent version of amy from gargantia i realized i was like oh that's that's why because you could see the whole glider you could see the delivering packages but i tried to change her appearance a little bit to fit what i had more in mind she is the navigator and mechanic of the group as she's able to go anywhere and also can help uh, transport people and is respectively the youngest due to her age. The sci-fi magical girl part comes from her transforming pole. She likes to fly, can control any vehicle, and great to fix a mechanical thing. So just a kind of regurgitation of what uh, I said before. So yeah, so she is in a way very youthful who enjoys flying. <laughs> and the last character is... Lucas Magnolia, who was designed by Noyu, who is often known for doing a lot of BL related things. So partially why I want to commission for for this design. So uh, his concept is actually probably the most complicated out of the group, as in a way he is inspired a lot by webtoons and Fire Emblem and BL and also Megaverse. So. It comes from just a lot of from a lot of like media I tend to enjoy reading. So it's kind of a fusion of like, if I can create a story based on what I like and kind of combining all that, what would it become? So he so his character was inspired by that. So he's a captain of the Royal Guard. He uh, his main his main concept is phrase is appearances may be deceiving, but the heart never lies. As in he kind of looks different than what you'd expect and also acts differently it's sort of like his appearance in a way is his protection against uh his um negative external forces and circumstances 
He's male, but lives in an Omega-verse world, so he's also a male Omega. Oh, I'm not going to go into Omega-verse, you could just Google that yourself. <laughs> but it's a interesting BL trope I, I like. Um, he looks like a prince, or alpha, but hides that due to societal stigma and due to his position. And he takes uh, suppressing to deal with the heat and deal with uh, irregular side effects. Originally, his hair was actually supposed to be like this. Blonde in the front, brown in the back, kind of like Hikaru from Harkarnogo. But I wanted it to be slightly different, so it ended up being kind of purple instead. Hair is short and swept up. It's kind of like a, a nice, clean like haircut. And it's uh, taken a few examples, like So Light Winkler from Eternal Covenant and Manwa, which I like. Richard the Lionheart from Fake Strange Fake. Carcel from The Broken Ring, This Marriage Will Fail Anyway. It's like a, a princely appearance. He also wears armor like that of Fire Emblem characters. <clears throat> with a cloak on top for traveling. So I include a few examples from uh, Fire Emblem Shadows of Valentia, which is one of my favorite Fire Emblem. It is my favorite Fire Emblem uh, game. And um, he's kind of like uh, meant to be kind of not. He's not an armor unit. You know? He's wears like a lot of light armor in order to make him a bit more mobile. Wears like very simple uh, uh, jewelry and he can use both a sword and a bow. So you can see that's kind of Fire Emblem uh, inspired there. And also, uh, he has a flower motif because of the Omega part, Omegaverse part, so his uh, pheromones smell like magnolia blossoms. As uh, when trying to look up, what is what are the most fragrant flowers? I was like, oh, there you go, magnolia blossom. It kind of suits the character, so I'm like, why don't we go with that? Because, um, yeah, because scents are kind of important. So I try to pick a, a suitable scent. <laughs> and you can see also in uh, his art here, where he has like this kind of light armor. Um, I want to get him designed a little bit better for armor, as um, design isn't really known for uh, doing armor characters, which also makes sense. I may uh, have to look for a fine um, artist for that. But also you can see he's wearing some chain mail in the center of his clothing. Mm-hmm. So he is inspired by a lot of things, uh, Fire Emblem, uh, especially. As you can see from the middle uh, is Lucas from Fire Emblem Shadows of Valentia, and uh, Alcris from Fire Emblem Gage on the right. So you can see that it's sort of showing, ha having ting taking similar motifs with the armor, especially not being too armored, but kind of light armor, and also having leather underneath, and also having a bit of the high boots, uh, kind of like this flowing uh, aspect a little bit but also like it's it's like a certain like look to it as Fire Emblem characters are known for having their armor but also being kind of what do you call it mm, they kind of stand out in their own way if that makes any sense and the left uh, is more of the inspiration for the, for um Lucas's lore as it's I forgot the English name but it's sort of like involving pretty much a group of princes that with the Emperor wanting to step down, they have to go through uh, a series of trials in order to determine who would be the next Emperor of the Kingdom. So, it comes with Lucas's background of being a... Like, I couldn't go into detail because it was just too long. But in essence, they are Isekai... They, are, they were a young woman who is Isekai'd into a fantasy world. Who they've read the novel of. But in reality, the fantasy world's real. It's not just... A fictional it's not like being transferred into a book it's transferred it's like being transferred into a planet that the book is coincidentally very inspired by and having to go through via trials and overcome them in order to achieve their goals if that makes any sense so yeah uh so kind of a fusion of a lot of things and also here's some secondary inspirations of you can see richard line hard left kind of has that princely youthful look uh, what's his name? I think his name is Leon in the center with the purple hair. Uh, showing the, that archery aspect. And having the light uh, light, light armor. In, right, in the right is Carcel, who has that certain type of uh, haircut which is swept up. Which is a good example of the general type. And also me showing that I really do like my webtoons. <laughs> so yeah, so it's... Uh, I, I kind of... If, in, like... He, Lucas is inspired by a lot of things I like. <laughs> 
So the initial concept for Lucas was that Lucas actually used to be uh, a young uh, woman who was a villainess, who, in a game for the throne, summoned the spirit of her ancestor to aid in the fight. So this answer was an older man who was also like a grandfather towards uh, this villainous lady. So that concept was was kind of all taken by the um, was inspired by the Fate franchise. I see I included a bit of a uh, few pictures of Arthur from Fate. But eventually I instead made a male and not really I removed the uh, something concept completely because it just was too complicated. Like I couldn't uh, request for so many designs for one character. So I had to uh, make it a bit more simple. And Lucas is also the mom or mother figure um, because they have, uh, they're married <laughs> from the uh, Prince of the Kingdom that they live in. And they also have a child with them. And also overall looks like super intimidating, but in really just a very kind person. It's kind of like having like a front in a different face depending on who you interact with. Their uh, special skill is that they can see the emotions and minds of others via colors. There's like a certain like way to describe this phenomenon. It's kind of like how people, when they taste something, they could see colors or when they hear music, they could see, it's like a very specific type of like symptom or I don't know. It's like, it's a very specific, there's a word for it. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. So this is uh, their like skill that were, they were given in order to help them win the emperor's game, which is what I'm calling their, uh, their series of trials at the end of the face. And that they won in the Emperor's game, even when uh, having to deal with a lot of negative circumstances. Um, Lucas's original name was Eliza, and was inspired by uh, that name is inspired by Elizabeth Mon Magnolia because of the fragrance. It's a very um, pleasant fragrance. Um, Lucas takes care of Audrey the most, as Audrey is like a younger child, and also it has that like. He has that like maternal uh, instinct kind of <laughs> coming in here. Um, is skilled in magic and swords and bows. And also is just in general inspired by me liking webtoons, BL, Fire Emblem, and Omegaverse. I just, I just like all these things and kind of just became one character. <laughs> as you can see, even on the top left, um, I included um, a Stepmother's Marhen. As it's one of my favorite webtoons and also has like a lot of like complex characters dealing with a lot of complicated circumstances. I wanted to incorporate that a little bit in here as well. But yeah, uh, that's all. And let me know if you have any questions regarding uh, Echo's verse. Uh, I said a lot and I hope, uh, hopefully, hopefully it all makes sense. But um, in case if you are wondering about anything, uh, just let me know and I can answer them for you guys. I know my own character is the best and I try to keep things a bit more concise in a a bit more, uh, mm, I guess, I don't know if detailed. I, I think I try to do as much detail without being excessive, if that makes any sense. But yeah, just feel free to let me know and I'll, I'll be looking forward to any uh, comments if people are interested. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully uh, you'll, uh, bleh. hopefully I can uh, work on getting a lore um, video, uh, I guess, commissioned for these characters later on, though, um, Maybe not right now. I'm I'm kind of working on things uh, behind the scenes, but I'll I'll do what I can because because these things can get kind of expensive. So I may just have to save up money for this kind of thing. So yeah, thank you so much. Take care. <laughs>